when he does things, he does precisely what he wants to do, but what he wants to do, he does with dedication, he does with sincerity, and he certainly wants to follow things through right to the end. In all the time I've been in the league, I have never seen anyone who has ascended so rapidly as has Ken Dryden. When you are off the ice, which is a lot of time, you have a great opportunity to become involved in other things, in other interests, which will last maybe for 40 or 50 years, whereas hockey will last maybe only 10. As far as I'm concerned, he's one of the brightest, most intelligent young men I've ever met. I'm his brother, you know, and uh, I know him pretty well. I think he's a little bit overrated. He's got a few weaknesses. In a society in which our most recognizable public figures are often athletes, goaltender Ken Dryden has achieved almost instant stardom, despite the rigors of combining National Hockey League play with full-time attendance at McGill University Law School. Although this is officially only his second season with Montreal Canadiens, Dryden has won two NHL awards, played on the Stanley Cup team, been selected as an all-star, and played for Team Canada in the recent series with the Soviet Union. But hockey is only one part of Ken Dryden's life. And tonight, we meet this unique athlete on and off the ice, as well as the people who know him best. His wife, Linda. His brother, Dave, who plays goal for the Buffalo Sabres. His father, and a number of personalities from the sports world. Tonight on Telescope, Ken Dryden, a student of the game. Of all the great goalkeepers I've seen, now I think uh, Dryden it reminds me more of Bill Dernan than any other goalkeeper I can remember. The style was the same, their appearances were very similar, and uh, his style was so effective, uh, that is Dernan's, and Dryden even almost sounded alike, as well as look alike. And I think that if Dryden can keep this up uh, for a couple of years, he's going to be classified as perhaps the greatest goalkeeper of his time. But like Bobby Orr, he needs time to prove it. Hockey is very important to me. I think it has to be when you, you spend as much time as you do in practices and games and so on. But I think that what you must keep in mind is that you should put what you're doing in perspective the fact that you are playing in something that, that really is just sort of entertainment and that there are other things to do uh, and there are other things that are more significant that have more of a, an effect, a lasting effect on, uh, on other people. I think the way to uh, describe Dryden is to say that he's a very refreshing personality. He loves hockey, but he doesn't permit hockey to dominate his life. He doesn't permit it to permeate every phase of his being. You know, we've all heard coaches say that the real pros have to think hockey, they have to breathe hockey 24 hours a day. Well, that isn't true. And of course, Dryden and a number of other outstanding players have shown that it isn't true. I have many motivations for playing hockey. And I think the first and the prime motivating factor is just enjoyment of playing the game. And certainly another factor that I find very interesting and enjoyable about hockey is the fact that it provides a very flexible lifestyle. Certainly the amount of money that you can realize playing hockey at this moment is greater than I could realize in any other kind of job. But it doesn't take much money for us to live on and in a way, that's, that's a really good thing because it, not necessarily that it ends up saving money or whatever, but provides you a certain flexibility that when that day comes, when you no longer want to play hockey, when you are forced or decide to choose uh, another occupation, which inevitably will pay that much less, you won't have the feeling of being locked in to doing something that you don't want to do just because the salary is that much greater. He uh, used to be very tight with his money. And now that he's got so much of it, he doesn't have to be as tight anymore. But he still tends to be a little bit sticky sometimes. Uh, one of the last times I went into Montreal, I expected him to take me out for a, a steak dinner, and he took me to Harvey's for hamburgers instead. 
During the summer when we get together, we like to get in as many games of tennis as possible. When I was about uh, 22 and Ken was about 16, he all of a sudden started to beat me in everything. Um, tennis was one of the games in which he excelled and I just couldn't seem to beat him at all. We like to play tennis a lot because it's a good reflex game and it's good for goaltenders. Finally this year, I beat him in tennis for the first time in a long time. Many people get a wrong impression of Ken because he does appear so calm on the ice, but actually Ken, underneath that calm exterior, is very excited. Anything that interests him does excite him. Uh, books, sports on TV, watching the World Series. It's, it's really neat to watch a person that has involved himself in sports, yet he can watch a football game or the World Series. And like, he's more excited, it seems, at that instant about that particular sport than he is about his own. As a hockey player, I think that we have sort of ambivalent feelings about the state of professional hockey at this time. Very selfishly, it's, it's great for the player because there are an increased number of teams so that you have a better opportunity for finding a job. In addition, the salaries are that much higher. And so you gain in that manner too. But at the same time, you suffer in that you only play the best teams a couple of times. And when you have those games so rarely, oftentimes you just have a feeling that, you know, what are you playing for? But you know, I think the person that's suffering most from it all, of course, is the fan. He's becoming slightly disenchanted, especially in cities like Toronto and Montreal, where the teams have always been great and they've always had the great rivalries with Chicago and Boston and New York and so on. But the only way anything can be done is if the fan calls a halt and says, it's not worth it for me to spend $7 or $8 to see a game. As soon as he starts giving up his season tickets, that's the time that the fan will be listened to. We plan to have an area for garden and an area for recreation for the children. And we asphalted the area at the rear of our home. We built two regulation hockey nets, and uh, it was a gathering place for all the boys of the neighborhood, quite a number of which, of course, were Dave's friends. We spent many happy hours playing on that red asphalt backyard. The boys would come over after school. They'd come over on Saturdays and Sundays. We'd have 10, 12, 18 boys playing at one time. It was a really enjoyable period of our lives. Uh, I think it was here where Ken probably developed his competitive instincts uh, as much as anywhere else because the boys that he was playing with were my age, about six years older than Ken. In order to keep him from getting killed, we had to outfit him with a baseball catcher's protector, a football helmet, and a baseball catcher's mask. One day our delivery boy was dropping the groceries at the rear door and my wife came out with the money to pay him and he was wide-eyed and he says, Mrs. Dryden, a creature from Mars just came up out of your basement. And really, when we look back on it, he did look like someone who was on a mission to the moon. By the time we got to Moscow, he had adjusted his style uh, to a degree that allowed him to play uh, two very, very fine games uh, against the Russian team. I think his best game was uh, the second game uh, in Moscow. Uh, he had an excellent game in the, in the final game to win it for us. And I think most of the credit should go to Ken himself for his, uh, the adjustments he made uh, after an astute analysis of the Russian team. I really thought it was just a, a great, great series. I mean, it's, it's something that, uh, you know, going into it, you, you had fairly high expectations, and yet the series was just so much more than you could ever anticipate. Certainly, if another international series took place, I think that certainly preparations you know, should be different. Now that we realize the strength of the opposition, I would say that we should try to maximize our strength in you know, a series. And so I think that certainly it should not happen in the summer, but rather either mid-season or towards the end of the year.
And second of all, I think that the next time we should definitely have our best team. I think that this past time, you know, again, it was a factor that, you know, we can win without Bobby Hall and without J.C. Tremblay. And I think the next time the realization will be there that a Bobby Hall is necessary. And hopefully a Bobby Orr won't be injured and that you will field your absolute best team. I think the most frustrating part of the series for me was just the fact that here you were playing against people that you really developed a great respect for. And when the series started, you maybe knew five or six names. And by the end, you were starting to know everybody personally. And yet you had no contact with them except on the ice. And, uh, you know, obviously they have very interesting backgrounds. They do things certainly, you know, somewhat differently and they have impressions about us as players and, and as people and so on, and yet you have no way of, of talking to them. Uh, you know, you, you come together on very rare occasions, and, and when you do, there, there's a minimum of uh, interpreters and, and just no opportunity to really get together to really get to know the person. The criticism that Team Canada has gotten since the series is a bit of a surprise to me, and maybe it shouldn't have been, uh, maybe it should have, I don't know, but while you're actually going through it in Moscow, maybe it's just that you're so wrapped up in the game or whatever, but a lot of things that were complained about later were things that I didn't notice at all um, happening when I guess they did actually happen. And I think that what made us look bad was the fact that the Russians don't play like an NHL team that uh, maybe the, the contrast in styles made us look very bad. And uh, so, you know, while the criticism, you know, is interesting and, and may be valid, I think that, you know, unless you've been critical of, of an NHL style of play in the past and, you know, up to this point, I don't think that you, you know, really have too much of a right to all of a sudden, you know, find great criticism in, in how NHL players conducted themselves, you know, in the series. I'm sure that someday soon we're going to all be involved in international hockey. And the one thing that Canada is going to need so badly, and I think this is pointed up in the Russian series, is perhaps one or two people involved right in the game, not at the executive level, but right on the ice, who have that diplomatic ability to sell Canada the way we would like to see it sold, and to uh, represent us with dignity and with courtesy and I can't think of anybody better than Ken Dryden to do this. Members of Team Canada, Canadians have seen through your example that we can match athletes anywhere in the world. After coming back from the series, it was it was really a, a very difficult first five or six days. I mean, you, you came back and all of a sudden, just the, the pressure and the feeling and the excitement of the entire six weeks had ended abruptly. And uh, I had no energy, no ambition to do anything. And it was just totally tired all the time. And, and I've never gone through quite as difficult a period as that. And then with the, the fact that I had missed the entire month of uh, September at law school, it, it made, uh, made it all that much more difficult because of the, the backlog of work that I had. He's a great goaltender, but I would like to predict that he'll be an even greater lawyer and possibly in the future of this country, a great lawmaker as well. I have no idea what I might do in the future I really don't make a practice of making any kind of meaningful plans because the plans usually end up being discarded along the way as new things come up. But I think that what I can say and say with some conviction is the fact that uh, the kind of experience that I had with, with Ralph Nader, the kind of involvement, the kind of strategy and technique and, and basic philosophy will be something that, that will continue to have an influence, whether it be uh, in hockey or whether it be in, um, in law or in any other area. I think there are certain principles involved there that will remain constant.
Next on Telescope, a profile of the Montreal Canadiens star goaltender, Ken Dryden. Although he's only in his second full NHL season, Dryden has already helped win a Stanley Cup, been selected as an all-star, and of course played for Team Canada against the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, he's a full-time student at McGill University Law School. You'll meet Ken Dryden, his family, and many personalities from the hockey world. Next, on Telescope.